Thank you, Dr. Fatma. And now uh, I will introduce a little bit about him and he will introduce himself in, in, in his style. Um, he is um, a doctor or dentist in profession. He is a trainer in fashion and uh, he trains in Arabic and English. He's a certified trainer, certified coach from ICF and uh, he's a good friend for lots of people and definitely for me. In, he's a past District 20 director and let's all welcome Dr. DTM Muhammad Makhlouf. Good evening. Thank you very much, Madame, Tos, Madame DTM uh, Wafa Salman, our president and our trainer of the day. Welcome to Basics of First Aid. Uh, I am Mohammed Mahlouf, self-development trainer, uh, certified from Highfield UK, expert trainer certified from ISTD, certified life coach from ICF USA, basic life support, which includes CPR and first aid and basic life supports from the American Heart Association of US, and as you know, Boss District Director and Distinguished Toastmasters. Few ground rules. Everyone knows the exit, of course, now. We are all at home. Mobile phones, I wish if you are not using your mobile phone, keep it on silent mode. Mute your mics unless you are asked to unmute. If you wish to participate, you raise your hand option and we will take care of that. And if there is anything you want, please write in the chat box. I will keep the chat box in front of me. So we will use it a lot. Please write the questions and answers I'm sending. And if there is any question, please raise your hand or write it in the chat box. Our agenda for today, we will speak first about the personal protection equipment. Then we will learn how to assess the scene where there is a victim or something. Then how to first aid the bleeding and some medical emergencies. This is our agenda for tonight. And before starting, I want to ask you, every one of you uh, has a purpose of doing something. On the chat box, please write to me why you are attending this workshop. In one word, like uh, my why is uh, passion. My why is uh, learning. My why is money whatever you want, please write it. Yes, I had uh, safety, learning, what else? Mm. Yes, to help others. I want to know more about first aid. I like to listen. To Thank you, Mahish. <laughs> more awareness from Fatma Abdu. Yes, Wafa to practice, wow. Knowledge. Thank you, Najwa. Okay. Hamada for safety to update my knowledge. Wow, I'm so glad that uh, Yvonne was one of the persons that attended first aid before. Safety, you are professional in safety, Ram Kumar. Wow. Thank you, Hazim. Thank you so much. Okay, the American Heart Association purpose of doing this training all over the world for non medical persons. First aid and CPR is directed to non-medical persons. And she's giving certificates. And these certificates is uh, uh, eligible for two years and you have to update your certificate. The main purpose for all that in the American Heart Association and my purpose also for this training, small training session is life. Life is why we are doing what we are doing. Because trust me, 
you may not need any of what I will say. You will not, may not need any of the, the courses of first aid and CPR. But if unfortunately you are in a place that needs first aid or CPR and you will not be knowledgeable enough, eligible to do it, and you found somebody who's dying in front of you and you are not able to do anything, and you don't know who's that somebody, how much he's relating to you, you will be regretting all your life. So take it serious and think about taking this professional official course from American Heart Association for your benefit. As we will run through the presentation, it's just a small hint. It's an eye opening about the importance of first aid and CPR. And trust me, life is important and it's worth it to take the first aid one. I'm giving this course for now about four years in different places. And this official course is a little bit different than what I will give. I'm giving just basics of life uh, support, first aid. But the official course is for two days. Each day is four to five hours. So total eight hours course. So let's start with the simple thing. Who's that? Ah. Uh, this is the full personal protection equipment. I want each one of you to write me anything that you know uh, in the picture other than me and the gloves. So write the other things. What do you can see, what you can recognize in the picture? Face shield, wow, great. Shield, yes. This is called face shield, which is covering the face, the full face. Suit, it is not called suit, it's called overall. Medical mask, excellent Yvonne, yes. These are double masks. The first mask is this one, which we all use and know. The other one is N95, which is specified for virus protection. It gives a protection of about 99% against virus. Of course, uh, gloves. What else? The yellow one is called gown. Yes, Hamad, a protective overall. And the yellow one is called gown. You have to see these things in any doctor you are visiting in such days. It's your health at the beginning. So don't uh, be, take it easy. Try as much as you can to find a doctor who is using mask, professional mask, face shield, gown, and gloves. He may use overall or may not use overall, but gown, mask, face shield, and gloves is mandatory for, person, for his safety and for your safety. Okay, great. So now we know majority of the personal protection equipment. The minimum is face shield, mask, and gloves. We all know how to wear masks. The blue side outside, this band is on the nose and the loops around the ear. And be sure that the mask covers till the chin till the bony chin, not here, because this will allow the viruses or any bacteria to come inside. So it should be like that. And be sure that the band is adapted to your nose, especially those like me who is using eyeglasses. Keep it, the band, keep it close around your nose. So this is how we use the face mask. Now let's see this video 
and see how we will use the gloves, disposable gloves. And after finishing the video, I will demonstrate again with a gloves and I will ask each two to go to the breakout room and try to do it together. So be sure that you are following these steps. Are we ready? If you are ready, please thumb up. Are we ready? Thumb up. Great, great. Excellent. Okay, so let's see the video. Project 3D, how to safely remove used gloves. One has to follow specific steps when removing used gloves to minimize the chances of cross infection. Pinch the glove at the wrist level and pull it some distance away from the skin without touching the skin of the forearm. Peel the glove away from the hand, thus allowing it to turn inside out. Hold the removed glove in the gloved hand and slide the fingers of the ungloved hand between the glove and the skin of the wrist. Remove the second glove by rolling it down the hand and folding it over the first glove. Discard the removed gloves in a suitable biohazard waste bag or bin. Perform hand hygiene. See how much it's easy? How many can do it again now? Thumb up if you can do it again in the breakout room. Amazing, amazing. Okay, so for those who cannot do it, this is a picture. Please screenshot this picture with your mobile and make use of it when you are in the breakout room as a reminder for the steps. Can you please prepare the breakout room when I am trying to remind them how to use the gloves again? Okay. So we have these gloves. The first step is to peel the gloves away from your skin. This is the dirty side of the gloves. The inside is the clean side of the gloves. So try with the dirty side to don't touch the clean skin. So with this, I remove it like that. Hold it between my other hand. See? So I didn't touch any of the dirty side of the gloves. Then with these two fingers, from under the other gloves, I will reach the clean side of the gloves again and take it out simply and slowly. And we have the gloves outside. Easy? You have two minutes in the breakout room to try to do inside, to try to put the gloves and remove it safely in the breakout room. Be sure, don't touch with the dirty side, the clean skin. Always use the clean side to touch the clean skin. Great. So let's go to the breakout rooms. You have two minutes. Each one will demonstrate to the other. Welcome, Abdel Wahid. Please, after two minutes, return them back. Okay. They are putting the timer now in the screen. Wow. I made the timer automatically.
Yes, schedule them. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> How was it? First one. Huh? Uh, it was good. Is it easy? It very well. Well, one minute okay, for how great. are you? Everyone is good. Then everyone, one everyone minute did minute it for that. Oh, great, great. So I'm so happy that you did it very well. Okay. <laughs> we, we tried. Were, <laughs> we, were three, we were three in the breakout room and all three of us without gloves. No problem. You can imitate that there is a gloves. It's, it depends on the uh, steps, not the presence of the gloves. Of course, if okay. you have gloves, it will be more uh, visible. But if you don't have, you can imitate to do. Anyway, okay. keep the picture in your mobile. And if yes. you need any support, please tell me. Uh, if, we need any, if we need any gloves, we'll ask Dr. Mahmoud. Yes, please. <laughs> so, all of us knows now also how to wash our hands. I want just to remind you that you need three things to wash your hands properly. First, water. Second, soup. Third, 30 seconds, 30 seconds, from 20 to 30 seconds, washing your hands, scrubbing your hands. This is very important, please, okay? So what we need is three things, water, soup, and time to properly scrub your hands from all over, especially between the fingers. Don't forget, between fingers. Doctor, doctor, you forgot the fourth thing. What? Stop watch. Wash No, Stop no, watch. you can you can sing happy birthday till the end. It will take 30 seconds, which is the time needed for washing your hands. But if I sing if it for you can't, of, it if you, can't uh, you don't need stopwatch, just sing happy birthday till the end. I said you forgot the fourth fourth thing. Okay, we will talk about that in Love Out Loud, Srini. <laughs> okay, so our second topic in the agenda is uh, assessing the scene. If you are in a scene where there is a victim, somebody who needs your help, what you should do? These are very important steps and you should always keep it in your mind so whenever you are seeing somebody who needs help, you should think in this manner. First, your safety. Then the victim's safety, the injured person's safety. So look for anything who may cause danger. If you are in avenues, in a restaurant, and somebody in the near table ordered soup, hot soup, and suddenly he fell down on the floor. What is the first thing you should do? Shout. Write on the chat. What is the first thing you should do? Other than drinking the soup. Scream, no, not, not calling the ambulance. Not to panic. No pot, <laughs> not rushing. <laughs> no, no, just remove the danger. First, remove the soup, move him, move, move the table and chair. So nothing danger will affect him or you while you are trying to help him. So the first thing, remove the danger from the injured person and to yourself. Second, think who can help you. Who can help you from those around you? If nobody will help you, ask them to be away, to give a space for you to think or to do something to help the person. Third, look for a telephone. Not to take a screenshot, not to post it in the Instagram and Snapchat, but to call the ambulance or to call the uh, emergency. And before calling the emergency, you have to know who is the injured person and where are you? Because they will ask you about the address. You should know properly where are you in avenues. You can't say 
I am in avenues. It's very big. So what do you think? First, remove the danger. Second, who can help you? Telephone and the details about the injured person and where are you? Of course, if he is not able to talk, you can ask somebody or at least male person about 40 years old, something like that. Few details to inform the emergencies that there is somebody who is lying down. You can say, someone is lying down. What can I do? This is not proper. At least say a male person, 40 years, around 40 years old. Uh, no need to add if he is handsome or no, he has her or no. This is not related to the, to the topic, okay? This is very important. I'm reading, Kajita Raymond, I'm reading. <laughs> That's why I'm doing this course, not to lay down and take a picture with him. Okay, guys, let's move on. If someone is seriously injured, how do you know that he is seriously injured that need ambulance? How do you know? First, he's not responding. How do you know that he's not responding? Please don't move any injured person. Don't move him. Just tap on his shoulder. Hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? That's it. And check if he is breathing or no. This is very important. If he is breathing or no. If he's feeling any chest comf uh, discomfort or no. If there is any signs of stroke, you know, the signs of stroke is very simple. Dropping lip and there is no expression in the, the side of the face. All muscles are dropped like that. And his, his face is moved to the other side, like that. So if you see, see a face like that, call the ambulance immediately because it's, uh, life-threatening disease. He may die within no time. He may have a complete paralysis in no time. So co your call will save his life. So on the chat box, please write the number of the emergency ambulance in Kuwait. 115. No, Abdul Wahid, think about it again. Yes, 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 yes. Well done, well done, guys. Well done. Always call 112. Don't call 911 as per any movie. 911 is where in US, for us here, it's 112. Okay? A very important thing, you have to think about it, other than all these signs. Immediately call 112 if you are not sure what to do. If you are not sure what to do, call them. They will at least tell you what to do. Okay? Okay, sir. If we are ready to do that, this is half of the job of the first aid person. To inform the responsible persons about the case. So if okay, please thumb up. <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. Where is your thumb up, guys? Okay, great. Uh, has it, I will kill you later. Now to find the problem. How to find this? problem of the guy. As I told you, this person is lay, lying down. He lost his conscience and there was a machine behind. He closed this machine and started, started checking the problem to find where is the problem. So first, see if he is conscious or no. Second, check if he's breathing or no, by just scan the chest, 
if the chest is going up and down, so he's breathing. If he's not going up and down, there is a problem. And third, check if there is any bleeding place, if there is any fractured area, if there is anything abnormal. If you didn't find, check very important thing. There is jewelry for those patients who has heart problems or diabetics or these things. These jewelry saying that I am diabetic. I am heart disease. I am. So if you find this jewelry, this will make it easy for the ambulance. They will guide you what to do before coming. This may save his life. So it's very important to try to find the problem without moving the victim from his place. Moving the victim from his place may cause death if he has a neck fracture and you moved him, he may die. So if he is in a car and the car will explode because of an accident in the street, what you should do? Makhlouf said, don't move the victim. No, in that event, obviously, we need to move the work. Move exactly. The Try to move him in a safe place. If he is in yes. the road and there is traffic in the road, please move him to a place. Okay? Great. Now, let's try to think about the bleeding. And bleeding, we are seeing it everywhere, at work, at home, everywhere. This is uh, a very small first aid bag. There is bigger one with all the things there. And here, there is bandage goes for that i have some goes here and if you don't have goes you may use uh, tissues to replace the goes now but try always to keep those at your place so if you have a bleeding what is the best treatment treatment i'm saying thank you najwa well done and Cajetan also. Of course, Priscilla. They had goes at home. Okay. So, what is the best treatment? Jumana, well done. So, the bleeding treatment is pressure. Pressure and pressure. So, how to stop any bleeding, either mild or severe, by pressure. Yes. Trying to prevent is the best, but if you have bleeding, how to treat the bleeding? By pressure. Just put pressure on the bleeding area till the bleed stop. If there is severe bleeding, pressure and tourniquet. So simply, there is few steps to do during the bleeding. First, first use two, three goes and put it on the bleeding area and apply pressure. For ladies, please pressure. Not just put your hands like that. Huh? So pressure and then see if the bleeding, don't remove the goes. If the bleeding is still continue to happen, add more goes. Okay. Then if it finished, use bandage and apply pressure with the bandage and immediately go to the nearest, if it is a deep bleeding or deep uh, uh, cut wound, deep wound, go to uh, first aid uh, to any clinic and wrap it and let them see, um, apply pressure here on the area and keep it like that. Okay? So the first 
treatment is pressure. If there is severe bleeding, and after all that, it didn't stop, please do the tourniquet. And this needs a lot of uh, explanation. Tourniquet, I will send you in the main group of trainers and I will send anybody who is interested the steps to do the tourniquet. Okay? Are we ready for the medical emergencies? Thumb up if we are ready. Thank you, Sadiq. Well done. I, okay, so we will speak about breathing problems, cardiac arrest, heart attack, and hypoglycemia. These four things I saw uh, it everywhere happening at home or at work. So breathing problems. First, bronchial asthma, uh, they may use this by napilizer, you know, the one. So if there is any patient, asthmatic patient, and he start having a problem in breathing, so just hand the medication to him and ask him to start using it. It will solve it. Chalk. Chuck, this happens if foreign body goes inside. And we are seeing that a lot, especially in children. They may swallow by mistake something wrong, like coin or food or something, which will go by mistake to the uh, air bus uh, rather than the food bus inside. So it will block the air. So how to get rid of that? First, he will show the sign of shocking. What is the sign of shocking? He will hold his neck like that. And you will see his face turn bluish blue. in color. It will turn blue. Yes, he will be bluish in color and he will hold his neck like that. If he can cuff let him cough. Just support him, stay beside him, and let him try to cough. Or you can do some... Uh, uh, tapping on the back. Not tapping. Don't tap on the back. Just massaging his back. Tapping on the back is not right. Just massaging oh, okay. his back to help him to cough. If he's not able to cough, and the bluish start become more, and this foreign body is not able to go outside, do this maneuver. Stay behind him, put your hands as a fist like this, and put it on the middle of his abdomen, and try to push inside upwards, inside upwards, and this will create a back pressure on the lungs. And this will help the foreign body to go outside, as we can see in the picture. Yes, rather, back hug with the picture, with pressure. No, no, no. Breathing difficulties in the COVID is totally different, Sadiq G. And you know the difference between foreign body inside and asthma. That's why I spoke about the asthma before and this technique, if there is shock, not asthma. So it's yeah. totally different. If it is asthma, please give him the medication if he is on medication and immediately call 112. So you have to do 112 regime as we said it before. Call 112 and then try to help. Okay. This is if you have a breathing problem. Anything regarding breathing problem? Raise your hand, uh, thumb up. If we are okay with the breathing problems. Great. If there is cardiac arrest, what do we mean by cardiac arrest? The heart is a bump. 
and it pumps the blood all over the body. So cardiac arrest means this pump stopped pumping. No action in the heart anymore. So what we shall do in this case? Exactly. Well done, Najwa. Let's see this video. If you see about... a teen or adult suddenly collapse, it's important to act fast. Helping to save a life is easier than you might think. Just start hands-only CPR. The first step is to send someone to call your local emergency response number or call it yourself. Then get directly over the victim. Put the heel of one hand in the center of the chest. Then put your other hand on top of the first. Then push hard and fast in the center of the chest until help arrives. It's important to push, giving 100 to 120 compressions per minute, which is about the same tempo as this song. Let's hope you never have to use hands-only CPR. But if you see a teen or adult suddenly collapse, don't be afraid to try it. Remember, call your local emergency number, then push hard and fast in the center of the chest until help arrives. Your actions can help save a life. To learn more, visit international.heart.org. Of course, if you want to train on this maneuver, which is called CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, there is a proper uh, training for it with a certificate. And if you need, please contact me. I will arrange one for that for you. It's very, very important to learn it. You don't know when you will need it. Okay. Now, heart attack. Here, we have a little difference than the cardiac arrest. Cardiac arrest, I said, complete stop of the heart. In this case, the, the, the person will lose consciousness. He will not be able to reflect or respond to you. He will not have breathing. So no response, no breathing, nothing. But in heart attack, no, he's still responding. He's still breathing. So for common heart attacks, there is certain signs. First of all, there is pain and discomfort in the chest. There is number two, there is Lightness, nausea, and vomiting comes from up. Blood is not reaching the brain very well. Number three, you will have pain in the chin or lower mandible and in the back. And number four, there is discomfort in the shoulder. And number five, there is shortness in breathing. <laughs> He's doing like that. So, what you should do, immediately support him, ask him if he has any sensitivity for aspirin and give him two tablets of baby aspirin or one tablet of adult aspirin. You, don't Im you can't imagine the effectiveness of doing that because here we have a clot closing the blood supply to the muscle of the heart. So one or two muscles of the heart are not working. So partial, the heart is partially working. The cardiac arrest, there is, the heart is completely not working. Here, it is just partially working. So if you have heart attack, please give him a tablet of aspirin. If he has no allergy to aspirin. Please give him one tablet of aspirin. This happens many times around us. Hypoglycemia. When the blood sugar goes very down. This happens when the person uh, is exhausted at work so much. He forgot to eat or he forgot and take double dose of insulin or uh, 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 diabetic drug. So either he's not eating, so exhausted, or took double dose of insulin. 
he will feel tired, drowsy, uh, he is not able to concentrate well. And so what you should do in this case? First, try to support him, stay beside him, ask him if he has taken the medication or no. If he said that he took double dose or something, what you can do, give him high dose uh, liquid of sugar. The best is what? What is the high dose uh, food or liquid? You can give chocolate, yes. What else? Cola, yes, Yvonne. The best is cola. Any kind of Coca-Cola, 7-Up, anything. It has very high dose of sugar. So what you should give, juice or Coca-Cola or dates or honey, anything of this if he is conscious. If he is unconscious, go directly to the CPR and call immediately 112. As I told you, it's very important to learn first aid. I'm just giving you tips of how to manage many cases in uh, simply as in 40 minutes. I want to ask you before leaving, if you have a patient with hypoglycemia, what you will do? Yalla, in chat box, give hypoglycemia, cola. what you will do? Give cola. Give cola, okay. Give cola, Priscilla, excellent. Okay, if you have a patient with what else? Dates, well done, well done. If you have a bleeding person, how we can treat bleeding, with what? Pressure, apply pressure. pressure. And apply pressure, excellent, excellent, pressure. excellent. Uh, this QR code, include all my uh, accounts in social media. If you need to get to take first aid course, please contact me. I will arrange one for you. And thank you for this opportunity. I hope you learned something that will help you to help others, inshallah. Thank you so much for attending. And thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, doctor. Thanks for you. Thanks for you.